Hey guys, when I gave my talk at DevFest Orlando on TypeScript, one of the talks I really wanted to go over was the the talk that a buddy of mine, Lee, who I, I met there and has since sort of been networking with and keeping in contact with, gave about why the tech industry needs to hire more junior devs and the value that junior devs can bring to the table. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to go through his slides. I've sort of skimmed them, but we're going to pretty much take a look at them together because uh, this is something I think is really valuable and I think something that people should have some insight to and some things that you can do to get going. Uh, so I'm excited to share the talk with you. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Before we jump into the actual conference slides, I wanted to share the Tech Junior podcast. This is um, the same speaker, uh, Lee, and his uh, co co host, which I'm, I apologize if I'm forgetting your name right now. Uh, but they have a podcast called Tech Junior. It was a lot of fun. You can see here is about an hour and ten minutes, and we talked about TypeScript side projects, sort of um, you know getting up and running uh, as a developer, sort of my origin story. And then the last twenty minutes of it, we started talking about some of the geeky stuff we like, like board games and anime, a movie, all that sort of stuff. So I'll include a link to it in the description below. Go ahead and check it out and make sure you sign up for their newsletter while you're at it. All right. So uh, if you want to follow Lee and what he's been go up to, go to techjunior.dev. And uh, he actually has a meetup called Orlando Juniors. Uh, so it's a meetup dedicated to junior developers and just sort of getting better. But you can check it out there. So as I mentioned, this is Lee's um, slide deck and, and talk. And I'm sort of sharing it and giving my opinion of it. He's a full stack developer, podcaster, event organizer, and a junior developer, right? So Lee has been one of the people like myself who's taken a very aggressive stance to getting better and helping the community and continuing to grow. So his talk called You Don't Deserve Senior Devs, uh, which is a really nice uh, title. I like I like spicy titles. Like the talk I, I gave uh, was called TypeScript and Testing. But like the TypeScript part, I, I when I gave my talk, I put it in parentheses, how to slide in, slide into the DMs like a coding god. But I couldn't put that on there. It's a little too spicy, but I like, I like that. So um, obviously the tech industry is growing, right? And uh, I'm going to take my video down here so I don't block any of this. And you see one stat that he has here is that um, IT spending is at $3.8 trillion, not billion, but trillion, is and is up at 3% a year. So it's definitely continuing to grow. So there's quite a bit of opportunity. So supply and demand, right? And this is something people ask me all the time about like, oh, hey, what, what is going on with, you know, is, is, is the market oversaturated, blah, blah, blah. I imagine we're going to find out right now, right? So um, there's about 20,000 bootcamp grads a year, 60,000 computer science grads a year, and 500,000 unfilled computer science jobs with expected job growth of about 25%. So quite a bit out there. And he gets his stats from similar places like I do, Bureau of Labor Statistics is my personal favorite, code.org and course report. So the... The sort of quote here is that there are a lot of open jobs, but not enough developers to fill them. Getting a job should be easy. That was sort of his junior mentality. And I, you know, if you look purely at the numbers, then yeah, it would make sense, right? Um, but really not the case, right? Um, you know, the, the harsh reality, as he puts it. Um, I need more slash can't find good developers. This is something I've heard so many hiring managers talk about that they are just can't find anybody, blah, blah, blah. And then you have, um, you know, more recruiter spam already have a job. That's sort of the position I'm in now as a senior developer. While at the same time, you have junior developers who are just sort of crying saying that can't get a job. And, you know, I've said many times the, the hardest thing that you're going to have to do is not necessarily go and learn to code, although that's going to be very difficult. It's actually going to be to typically get that first developer role and break into the field. So why is it that we have this junior developer problem? You know, um, a couple things, some, some advice that he gives is um, don't treat graduation like the finish line. This is something I've talked to April about, who's currently in, in a boot camp. And the idea here is that that certificate, that whatever that you're doing from boot camp or um, college, it doesn't, 
it's just one piece of the pie. It's just one piece of the puzzle, right? And you could even look at it as the edge piece of the puzzle, which now maybe filling in the gaps get a little bit easier because the edge is the, the easiest part to identify. Um, and you can sort of work your way in. But it's not, you know, one one thing that I see a lot of unsuccessful boot camp grads and, and college grads that are trying to break into the industry do is they just spent, you know, four years in a college degree or they spent anywhere from, you know, maybe like three to nine months on a boot camp, they're ready for a break and a breather. You, you don't have that luxury. You're going to sort of, you, you really need to keep it moving. So you're going to want to work on your resume or portfolio and his don't be junior. Um, this, I, I don't know what he meant by this, but I'll tell you what I think this means is that, and I've, I've said this a couple different times is that the junior developer that is out there that companies are hiring aren't junior developers really. And you need to sell yourself as a developer not as a junior developer and you need to sell yourself as somebody who simply just doesn't have resume experience, but already has the skills to do the job. So, um, bad company advice, um, hire the inexperience, do the right thing, just do it. Right. That's not something companies are going to relate to. Um, you know, there's a lot of great reasons to hire junior developers, but just giving these sort of generic responses aren't going to be one that companies are going to go better. So why should, you know, companies uh you know make some teams that are more diverse and balanced what does that bring to the table well even as a senior developer when i'm interviewing candidates the things that i'm looking for and i i i don't mean diversity as in um sort of um and maybe he means something different but when i I look for a team i look for diversity in terms of skill set and effectiveness in different domains of of your knowledge base so for instance, one thing that I bring to the table that most developers don't is I'm I'm fairly strong in the front end. That would be one area that I can, and TypeScript and Angular, right? So this is something that I, I am very good at. But like when I'm hiring, do we have, yeah, I want people who are good in the front end, but I also want someone who is maybe very good with REST standards and microservices. And, you know, when you hire, bring on junior developers, they can bring in different insights and, um, you know, help balance that team out. So speaking of diversity in tech in that direction, you can see here that the tech industry is falling behind in some of these areas. Now, I don't necessarily like stuff like this, and uh, but I can understand that when you do an equivalent sort of, hey, why is it that you know X, Y, and Z is at a lower rate? Um, some of it is just that the social economic aspect is that you know guys who look a lot like me <laughs> uh, was. Uh, they, this is something that they were, you know, maybe they went to college for is more, um, more socially available. But I would imagine that as things go on, that those will continue to change. So uh, as far as statistically speaking, when you have gender diverse organizations, uh, you're about you're going to see above average profitability, um, which means that as you continue to have more men and men and women who are working together as well as um eth ethnically diverse that everyone sort of you get the good parts of everything is sort of the idea here and that there's been stats and studies to do this i wouldn't i hope his twitter resource is this little <laughs> thing and not any of these stats but but the the idea here being that you can definitely have an impact on on that now i personally when i do that i i don't take that into consideration i look more so at their skill set and how they do it and I, I say this being on a team that um that is actually um i am the minority as a uh in, in, in a quite a few different ways um but with that being said um you can start looking at some of these where uh, the average Netflix employee, you want to start supporting some of this with some real job data, is the average Netflix employee serves the company 3.18 years, which is significantly higher than uh, actually the average industry. But about 40% of them are suffering from burnout. And it's probably because all the developers are senior walking over each other and you have zero jobs matching your junior junior. Um, junior developers uh, sort of mentor and grow and take over some of those tasks that you don't really want to do. <laughs> um, and then you look at sort of how different aspects of organizations start burning people out. The Bay Area, two years. Two years is really, um, you know, 
short amount of time. You can see here, comparatively speaking to other um, industries, it's a four year. So it's about half as long as any other industry. So people are like, oh, millennials leave jobs all the time. Maybe, but statistically speaking, you're leaving twice as many jobs working in the Bay Area and a lot of tech companies. You have um, you have the majority of developers saying that they're reporting burnout and tech uh, has more turnover than people who work in retail or restaurants, which are oftentimes considered short-term or temporary gigs. So keep that in mind. Now, why do why is why are people leaving, right? And how does this impact you? And it's important to know this sort of stuff uh, from a very practical standpoint of knowing what to expect, right? And making sure that you're prepared. Because I I personally believe that as you are as you are surprised by things, that is what makes you more stressed out than anything else. Um, professionals leave their job for lack of opportunities for advancement. And as a senior developer, I can tell you that most of us who go and become developers will never go above being a senior developer. There's just not that many places for you to go. It's sort of crazy like that. It's a very interesting situation to be when a good portion of people don't like their managers. Part of the reason I'm staying at my job and relocating with the same organization rather than just taking another job is that I like the people I work with. I like the people directly above me unsatisfied work environment culture more challenging work um that's definitely a true aspect as well i recently asked to do something a little bit more challenging so um compensation benefits which you know is pretty big but not at the top of the list and then rewards and recognition of your contributions now how can junior developers help right um sense of progression communication leadership diversity culture code you know mentoring other people you get a very good aspect of self-improvement you're like you're having an impact and i could definitely could see that with junior developers now you start comparing this with the average junior developer salary to the average senior developer salary you can see that senior developers on average are costing about 50 percent more and i would even argue that this hundred thousand might even be on the low end for a lot of roles but um you know the, he got this from Glassdoor and uh, I guess senior salaries. So junior and senior salaries for Glassdoor. So that just seems a little low to me. Um, so let's see here. If you fancy yourself a senior mid-level de developer, have you learned something from a junior developer in your team? I've learned plenty of useful tips, shortcuts, learning resources. Almost everything I know about getting CI CD comes from more junior team members. Um, you can see here, companies take a chance that junior does their fresh perspective and eagerness to learn will do wonders for the business. I can tell you that I've brought a lot to, to I bring a lot to the table now, but I, as a junior developer, I felt like I brought a lot to the table then as well. Um, but I definitely remember being shut out at times and it's never a good feeling. Yeah, <laughs> shake their hoodies and say, where do you think senior developers come from? Excellent point there, Kate. Mentoring means communicating. So this is part of the reason companies don't want to hire junior developers is they all their there's this idea that senior developers are going to spend all their time um, you know, helping and babysitting it. It's really not that hard to ramp up a developer, uh, you know, and take some of your time to, to do things and it's a businesses run off dates and so it's all go, 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 we gotta make it by that date and they never wanna slow down. But having this communication where you're working like with other developers and you know maybe instead of hiring a senior dev you hire two junior devs and you have a slightly larger team but you can mentor and grow that team and um, you know start building out a little bit of that mentoring culture so one of the um, cool things about hiring junior and they can start working on this sort of low level work that maybe you as a senior developer don't have the time to do or want to do they can start working on things like documentation testing um you know eliminating that tech debt there's a lot of great tickets that the business typically won't prioritize that if you had a junior dev on staff there's really a lot of value that they can bring to some of those just as equally as important but oftentimes not as business important as other items that they would have senior devs work on. Um, and then again, about hiring more diverse aspects. So how to hire junior devs. The seven P's in minimizing risk. Fix your dirt floors. Let's see. I don't know what the seven P's I don't remember what the seven P's are. 
junior dev non-starters. You already have too many junior developers. Um, usually not the case. You legitimately need a subject matter expert. Usually not the case. Uh, you're not willing to commit to supporting investing your developers. Usually the case, unfortunately. <laughs> the, the only slide you remember is the one about how cheap junior devs are compared to senior devs. Usually the case. <laughs> That's usually what it, what it is. Um, taking interviewing seriously. So one thing that I I personally am always open to is interviewing somebody with less years of experience or no years of experience and because I give the same interview questions and tests and that I would for a senior dev and if they pass, they pass. I don't really, I personally don't care. Um, and oftentimes, I've said this as well, is that a lot of these job descriptions and postings are just like wish lists that you can't even really take seriously. I saw just the other day how that someone wanted a decade in Kubernetes and Kubernetes has been out for like six or seven years. That has been out a decade. It's just silliness at times. So, um, you know, eliminating the myth that you're spending 40 hours a week mentoring junior devs is a good place to start. And I sort of mentioned this earlier and realistically it's somewhere between zero and 10 hours, 88% of the time. Half the time, you're spending zero to five hours a week mentoring. You're not going to get a lot of mentoring out of most organizations uh, because they. the truth of the matter is that they don't want – companies don't want to hire junior developers that can't aren't self-sufficient to a, a point, right? You're obviously going to need direction, and that's fine. But, you know, this myth that you're going to be spending 40 hours a week mentoring junior devs um, just isn't true. So how can we ensure that junior devs are progressing? One of the items I liked quite a bit was that we had clear definitions of tech leads and senior devs and then juniors underneath those. And um, having regular one-on-ones with management to define what direction we wanted to go, how we wanted to get better, those were all things that, we were, that I really enjoyed at an organization I worked at. And then to keep them is this competitive to keep them is this competitive raise aspect oftentimes junior devs are you know let's say you start a, a role at fifty thousand dollars by your one year it's up to the business to bump you to seventy thousand at your two years up to the business to bump you to ninety thousand and so on and so forth now the problem is that most people most organizations don't they just give you the minimum they can and then what ends up happening is you invest a little bit of time and then the, they end up leaving, which um, is unfortunate. So uh, allow for failure. This is crucial. You can't expect senior de developer work out of a junior developer. It's just not reasonable. Now, you can, you can do various ways to help support them, but it's like anything else. People are going to fail. I fail. To this day, I fail. Um, you know, and it's always going to be the case, but we can have these safety nets where it's code reviews, testing, and um, setting up things like feature toggles for our CI CD pipeline. So, um, you know, there's a lot of cool ways that you can lower that risk as well. I, the very first place I worked at where I was doing a technology trainer, they did these paid internships, which they called them internships, but the goal was at the end of the three months was to hire you. That was something, but they didn't want it to be guaranteed or anything like that because if it didn't work out, it's much harder to fire somebody or much more uncomfortable. So you have paid internships that they decide if they're going to offer you at the end of that time a role or not, right? A little quote here. I don't want to put words in his mouth. And then some credits here. So again, you can go to leewarwick.com to check out more. But the... It's almost a, I hate to use the word epidemic, but it's almost an epidemic of companies who don't want to hire junior devs. And part of it is that I think the barrier of entry is so low at some of these consulting companies that they go and they hire these people who have no idea what they're doing. And then they just feel burned. Like I've worked at numerous companies where they go and they, they hire consultants and they immediately regret it. Like a year later, they're like, it's cost three times as much and it barely works. <laughs> um, and so they have sort of this, like we're only hiring senior devs in house and it becomes very sketchy very quickly. So there is a little bit of uh, regret and sort of, I think um, how to put this like flashbacks, like nightmares about hiring junior developers because the senior developers that they've gotten are, are so poor. So I encourage you to become very good junior developers, very good senior developers and uh, make sure that you're continuing to excel and you're not repeating that first year 10 times. Instead, you're 
increasing your skill set and growing every year. So with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you to Lee for sharing these slides with me and allowing me to share it with you guys. I'll include a link to the podcast again in the description below. And if you're interested in any of my courses, there are links down below. And please, 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 I just spit all over my monitor. Please, please, please uh, go ahead and and subscribe i'm on that hashtag road to 100,000. we're trying to get there we're trying to get that silver play button i appreciate it i'll see you guys next time bye hey guys thanks for watching the video don't forget to check out my latest course the 100 front end interview questions challenge to make sure that you ace those front end interviews smash that like and subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching bye